This is an extract from the Leader Coronavirus Daily podcast by the Evening Standard and hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for it on your podcast provider. The weather's looking fine, there's a bank holiday on Monday and we're all allowed unlimited exercise in parks now. Sometimes it can feel like the new normal may not be that bad, but how much risk is still out there? Right at the beginning of this pandemic, Professor Erin Bromwich from Massachusetts University Dartmouth went viral, for want of a better word, with his blog post, The Risks, Know Them, Avoid Them. It was read 13 million times in a week. He's with me now to give advice on what to do as lockdown restrictions ease. And Erin, where are the dangers now? The biggest risks in regards to contracting are just more interactions with more people. Um, if we go back to handshaking and hugging and you know, crowded department stores and restaurants, we have just given everything the virus needs to find new bodies to grow in. There seems to be this relaxation of people's anxiety in general that something magical has happened in the last few days that allows us to go back to work and do these things more safely. We're in exactly the same situation, especially in the US, as we were when we locked down. We were heading up and we locked down. We've just hit that same point now and we're coming out. And so there's nothing biologically there that says we should be relaxing. But isn't finding the new normal part of, I guess, accepting a risk that you might catch this infection because there is no vaccine and we can't all stay at home forever so a big part of me writing these posts have not been about fear have not been about trying to get people to lock away i have worked in an infectious disease lab for over 20 years i know in my lab how to protect myself i have two young children i've taught them since they could walk when they're crossing a road they need to look left look right look left We have all the tools in our workplace or in our home, in our life to deal with the threats that we deal with normally. Nobody has the tools for this because it's new to the vast majority of people. So my writing is about how can we understand and appreciate the risk while still getting back to a gregarious life where we're spending time with each other. And so it's just understanding the role that masks play a role in dropping transmission. Social distancing plays a role in dropping transmission. For me, the trajectory of where this goes, especially over the next three or four months, is no longer in the hands of the government. It's in the hands of us. We need to make a choice. And our choices every day need to be there to determine where this goes. As well as countries like the UK, parts of the US going back to work, there's a lot of pressure on schools to open up again and let pupils back him. Is this the right time? If you have a high disease burden locally, then it's not the right time. It's not the time to be gambling with kids' lives when we just don't know enough about it. And to me, it's not just the kids. We know that there can be rare but serious problems with children with this. Where I have my worry is if we rush into this and we're putting teachers and staff into the front line of this, that's where my worry lays because not everyone is young and healthy that's in a teaching profession. In Australia, I have no concerns. We've got 20 cases a day and they're isolated into a very small area. Go back, be vigilant, be cautious. But when you're starting to talk about you know, 2,000 cases a day, when you're talking about those sort of numbers that we're seeing in different countries, I think we need to pause and then make the best decisions with that data. And it will come. We have countries like Denmark, we have countries like Australia, whose kids are back in school, and every epidemiologist and public health person is watching those schools like a hawk to see what is going on so we can make the best decisions for our own schools, you know, come autumn, you know, come September. And I would imagine that if schools go back, classes, lessons, school culture will have to be very different. You've written in your blogs about things like how singing 
and the act of singing can uh, worsen your possibility for an infection rate. So that's something like a school concert at the end of the year ruled out, isn't it? If things look the way they do right now, I, I, the answer has to be yes, um, for safety wise. You know, a lot can change between now and then. For example, you know, scarlet fever, we didn't need a vaccine for, we had antibiotics and we got that under control. A good therapeutic, a good treatment could really turn around what things look like. Predicting the future is tough, but any situation that puts lots of people in a close environment with lots of noise, singing, you know, talking, yelling, is probably going to have to be uh, altered for a while. I don't know about your house, Aaron, but there's a bit, a little bit of yelling in my house. Am I more at risk here or by going outside to going to work? As long as you're being reasonable in your interactions outside of the environment, you don't have to worry about your indoor environment at all. Um, so we treat our home just the way that we did. There's people yelling from upstairs and down. It's the same thing. Where the loud talking and the yelling becomes a problem is if you work in an industrial environment with lots of people, we're seeing the meat packing facilities, lots of talking, lots of yelling. It's a cold environment to preserve the meat. It just makes everything perfect for the transmission of disease. Call centers nightclubs you know in order to talk to your friend in a club you've got to get in close and you've got to yell we just set things up so are we then Aaron, resigned to living in fear of this virus fear of the virus is not the right thing have respect for what it can do even if it's not going to affect you personally but it does affect a lot of people so the individual decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day basis you know those little things of uh, how seriously do I take it? Do I wear a mask in enclosed spaces? Do I still shake hands or do I do social distancing the way that it meant to be? Those little decisions that you make every day will have a huge effect on what happens in our community going forward. You just need to think from a community standpoint um, for everyone to solve this problem and we will. Search for the leader coronavirus daily on any podcast provider to hear more from the podcast.